up real quick. So grabbing this, popping this at the head real quick. I get here, I put my C collar to the side. I lift the patient's head real quick, slide the arm underneath the head. Then you lift the life band up as one unit. Never separate the life band yet. Now it's all the way to the top. I open up the life band, slide it, direct it towards the patient. Grab it, slide it towards the patient. I grab this, slide this up. Open these up, make sure they're not twisted real quick. You can see they're still working on the patient because now they've probably put pads on. I'm gonna go ahead and open up my first in bag, grab my laryngoscope, check my laryngoscope. Grab my ET tube, check my ET. I'm gonna grab a seven for safe, for sake of argument. Okay, I check it, I check it, boom, boom, done. They're still working the patient. I'm gonna start doing, setting my IV stuff set up right here. Go ahead and if I, if you guys use J loops, flush my J loops, strong my line out, dice my line, run my line, boom, 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 done. Now we're ready. Now if they're already ready to deploy it at this time, then I'm gonna not worry about the IV yet. That's how we do it, okay? So I'm gonna get really close to this gentleman right here, okay? Who's doing chest compressions? I'm gonna turn it on. Make sure it's on. We're good to go. We got two green lights. Now he's gonna slow down for one second because I'm gonna explain how to lift the patient up, and he can't do. We can't do that with him doing chest compressions. So mind you, you're not gonna do that. He would still be doing chest compressions. Go ahead and stop. Take a breather. Okay. We did this when we That's awesome. lifted him up. Oh, it's okay. Okay. Sorry, okay. You're right, I, I, I figured it <laughs> Okay, so when we lift the patient up, this is how we're gonna lift the patient up. And it's gonna make it so much easier for you guys. So this young lady with her right arm is gonna go through the rib cage of this patient. Through the rib cage? Yeah. Just step through the ribs. I'm going through the rib cage. With her right arm. And the reason why, guys, is when she goes through the rib cage right here, with that arm, let me have that arm, with that arm right here. Okay, and then when I slide the auto pulse underneath, with her uh, right arm, she's grabbing this life band. She'll put this hand behind the shoulder of this patient, just like that, put that hand right here. This individual, with his left arm, is gonna go through the rib cage, not like that, just like this, facing this way, to grab this life band. You're grabbing this right here, and she's grabbing this right here. So when they lift the patient up, and they lift that patient up, I'm gonna slide the board from underneath. And we're gonna do it nice and slow, there's no race right now, but in real life, you're gonna be racing it, right? Because you want to try to, you want to meet all the HA guidelines, less than 10 seconds. So CPR is being provided. Boom, let's lift the patient up. I'm sliding the auto pulse underneath. Drop the patient down quickly. Attach your life band quickly. Put that on your knee. Put that right there. Attach it. Let go of it, don't touch it. If you put a penny on this life band, it's going to detect that weight. Do not touch it. Once you connect it, and you make sure that the life band's not twisted, you put it together, you raise it up, pop it down, you are done. Do not touch it. There's a green button. This is when you're gonna learn all the buttons. Green button, you're gonna tap it once. It's sizing up your patient right now. There's a three second pause that you do not need right there. See how the, the auto pulse stopped right here? If you guys need to stand up, that's fine. Now it starts, it saves you forget, and you're like, oh shoot, I forgot to hit the green button twice. So if you hit the, uh, green button twice, it deviates from that three seconds. It knocks that three, three seconds out, and it's doing chest compression. If you forget, it's not a big deal because it will start up by itself. So I'm gonna, as I'm at the end, I'm gonna look at the auto pulse light band and make sure it's high enough on this patient. It is high enough on this patient. Um, for right now, I'm just gonna throw this right there, leave those alone. I'm gonna go ahead and start tubing my patient right away. I already had it set up. I'm tubing my patient. Do, 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 do. So I've used uh, chemography, boom. Uh, check your chemography, okay, patient's in. If you're not, go ahead and pause. Listen, 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 listen. Remember, I'm skipping a few things. Okay, it's in, I'm double tapping. Okay, I'm gonna tape it up. Do, 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 do. I'm taping up, using a harness, a few harnesses. Remember, I'm skipping, all right? So now it's time for the seat collar. I'm gonna give it to him. To make sure I don't see my tube. Yep. Go underneath the shoulder straps. One, two, and three, boom. Okay, leave those on for right now. Now I'm gonna make sure that the seat collar's on. Good, it's good job. Go ahead and check, boom. Tape it up, I always use just one piece of tape so that it doesn't do this anymore, because that's what it's gonna look like in real life. One piece of tape across here, we're good. My tube is done. If you feel like you're not comfortable with tubing while this goes, which I feel really comfortable with, but if you don't, whatever, to each his own. You pause it, you're tubing the patient. At 10 seconds, it's gonna beep once at you telling you right now you're within HA guidelines, but what are you gonna do? At 20 seconds, it's gonna be three times at you, telling you you're against HA guidelines, 
Recommendation is start the auto pulse up and do two minutes of chest pressures to reset your tube, right? We're gonna say, for whatever reason, you're not gonna do that, you're gonna go ahead and get that tube, okay? So at 30 seconds, it's gonna be continuously at you. Saying, okay, we've drunk enough 40s, we did a pedicure on this guy, we're not helping the guy out, what are we gonna do? Right, right? Okay, so at this time, we're gonna say, you, if you wanna shut it up from beeping, okay? See the big orange button, which is your stop button. You're gonna hit that, it shuts it up indefinitely. If you hit this mute button right here with the little thing, it's gonna start back up beeping it in about five, five to six seconds, okay? So that's why I don't even teach with that. I just tell you hit the orange button. So now we're done, we've already tubed, everything's fine, because you, you didn't, we didn't feel comfortable tubing while it was going, right? You double tap and now it's starting back up again. Now it's time to put the shoulder straps on. This is what we put the shoulder straps on, this is how I educate everybody. Give me the hands of the patient first. When we hold hands with the patient, it's gonna be 10 times easier for you guys. See the silver bar behind the shoulders? That's where it's gonna strap in. Be cautious, because the mannequin will pinch your fingers. Quickly. Okay, hold on, don't tighten anything. Slow down. So now we're here. Remember, we're going slow. In real life, you're gonna be quick, you're gonna be doing it, but I don't want you to go fast now, because you're gonna skip things. I don't want you to skip anything. So right now, because I've tubed and it always starts from 30 to 2, there's a lot of departments, especially in the Missouri area, that just go automatically to continuous. They never even go 30 to 2. Okay? So that is an option. The auto pulse can be programmed that way where it automatically does continuous no matter what. We're not going to say that because we're right now in 30 to 2. So how to switch it from 32 to continuous? Because we've tubed, right? Right? You hit the gray button two times. It's going to say above the button in the digital uh, form, it's going to say switch to continuous. You're going to hit that two times. One, two, at any time that you're doing chest pressions, or when this is doing chest pressions, it's going to top uh, at the uh, left hand side of the screen, it's going to say continuous. The cool thing about this, it helps you in so many ways. What are you not going to do to your patient? Hyperventilate. You want to back your patient, right? Which is not hyperventilate. So every time it beeps at you guys, it's telling you when to ventilate. I don't even roll with the second person in the back of my rig when I run a code. So when it beeps, I ventilate. If one breath every eight seconds, I'll lay my PBM here. I got get my whatever I need, so I'm, I'm gonna throw out some things. Epi, atropine, sodium bicarb, whatever. Whatever floats behind you, right? Whatever I need to do. So I'm just throwing out things. Get those ready, whenever it beeps at you, you just grab the BBM real quick, ventilate, go back to doing what you're doing, okay? So, we're done. We're gonna do a two minute rhythm check. It's time to, I'm gonna check a two minute rhythm. So I'm checking a rhythm. Patient's gonna be in VF, for sake of argument, right guys? So shockable rhythm, we're gonna start it back up. Charging, charging, charging. Takes like 12 hours to do that, no, I'm joking. So it's gonna charge up, we're ready to shock. I'm clear, you're clear, we're all clear. We're gonna pause, shock, start the auto pulse back up. Now since we did this perfectly, I can't get the auto pulse to stop, no matter what I do. So I'm gonna do this, so don't lift the light band up fast like this. It's only for training purposes only. You have a red light. Up at the top of the screen, it's blinking user advisory. Okay, it's blinking user advisory, guys. How do you fix it? So anytime, just remember, red light, user advisory, how do I fix it? This is what you're gonna do on every single patient, every single time. Grab this light band, lift it up nice, slow, and gentle, please. Way too fast. Sure. Then quickly, she's going to grab the hips of that patient, look straight down on the hips of the patient. Go ahead. It won't hurt you. Move the patient's hips one side or the other, whatever needs to be done. She's recognized that it needed to go this way. So I'm going to hit the auto pulse one time. She's going to leave the patient alone. It clears it out because we've done it correctly the first time. You hit the green button one more time. It cinches down. It makes contact. You tap it again to go. That should take no longer than 10 seconds. My average time of getting that done is seven seconds. Okay, so you just have to recognize what side the bo uh, bottom of the half is because the load cells, remember you have to equal out the load cells. One cell is on, uh, the patient's up here on one side or the other side. You gotta look straight down the pelvic, quick, fast, and effective. Right? We're good? So then you're gonna switch this over to continuous yet again. So I'm, we're ready to roll. We've done everything that we need to do, but we need to go ahead and attach these straps. So how to tighten these up, guys, is you're gonna pull the yellow strap straight across. Below the, uh, uh, the C collar, below the clavicle, above the top of the light band. So what I mean by that is right here, I'm gonna go ahead and, uh, open this up for a second. 
Then I'm going to go ahead and tighten this up right here. Yellow first, always. Black second, always. And those, the blocks don't have to be tight. And you can't do that. Because what's going to happen is you're going to push this all the way up into the seat collar. And it's going to get jammed up. And it's going to be a fighting battle with you. So you just grab right here, grab the buckle. That's what the buckles are for. And just pull. They need to be somewhat loose right there. They don't need to be tight. Right? So then you grab your dark blue. See how much the patient's moving right now? We're going to tighten it down tight. How do you know if it's too tight? You stick your two fingers underneath the dark blue. If you get your two fingers underneath the dark blue, you're going to be good. You are fine. It's not too tight. The cool thing about this is now we're doing chest compressions. We don't have a tube in place, we're going to say. We're pretending we don't have a tube now. If you roll a patient over at a 45 degree angle, you can roll a 45 degree angle and it's going to readjust itself as if the person's laying flat on the ground. So if we With have the, a patient that has a big belly or a pregnant patient where the fan keeps sliding up, can 